Karen Cross, uh, according to, I believe this was Sean Ross Sapp on Fightful Select, uh, a name of interest uh, to possibly go back to WWE. I don't think that's a surprise, especially with Triple H uh, involved here. But I don't know. I, I know a lot of people really thought he was perfect for WWE. He To me, he was a little bit more... Um, when when I saw him in Impact and then I saw him in Bloodsport, I was kind of impressed. But when I saw him in NXT, I was like, I wonder if he was more of like a big fish in a small pond. And now that he's a little bit on, in, in a bigger place, he doesn't come across as impressive. But I, I could be off on him. I just I wasn't super impressed at NXT. But what do you think about him for coming back to WWE? See, the thing is, is that like, OK, they got him off on the wrong foot the way they booked him when they brought him to the main roster. No doubt. But he didn't stand out. Like even in NXT, it was like it was like um, they were used to people that were at a certain level. And yes, they pushed him like crazy. They had him beat everybody. But no matter how many guys he beat, it would never felt that anyone thought he was on the level of, you know, the top guys there like Chompa or Adam Cole or whatever, even though he ran through everybody constantly. Um, and on the main roster, it's like. You know, he's big and he's got a good body and, and he does some nice suplexes and stuff. But it's like he's not that much like like he's a good sized guy for sure. But it's like he doesn't stand out that much. And they have so many tall guys like, you know, like, you know, in WWE, the thing that people don't realize is a lot of those guys that are that don't even get pushed are deceptively big. Whereas like in other companies, um, you know, you see them and they, um, you know what I mean? Like the guys are are. There are not as many guys who's receptively big. You know, it's like guys that are good sized guys don't stand out with their size because you got almost and, you know, you got all of these kind of, you know, really big dudes, you know, Gunther, you know, and, and you know, even like a guy like uh, Kaiser is probably like six, almost six, four. So um, Cross who's not six, four, um, you know, it's not like he's going to be a big monster and work like a monster there because they got. You know, I mean, if if at his size he could work at a super high level, um, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, the size helps. He's not a small guy, but I like when he was on the main roster. It's like he's not that big, and his wrestling, you know, it's like standing next to, um, you know, some guy like Logan Paul. You know, he's thicker than Logan Paul, but he's not as tall. And you know, Logan Paul, you know, Logan Paul stood out with all these great moves and. Cross has some good intensity and this and that. I, I don't know. It's like if he goes there, fine, but I don't. I don't see him as a. I don't see him as a game changing guy on their main roster. Um, he needs Scarlet too. Well, they're obviously now they'll be more open to that, and then may and and you know that maybe that maybe that act does work. You know, I mean, the one thing he had in NXT was they pushed him like crazy, and he had the great ring entrance, and he had Scarlet, and when he went to the main roster, they took Scarlet away and they took the entrance away, and then he was just. He was just a six foot two guy with, uh, you know, big shoulders and big back who could wrestle decently well, but not a super standout. So with the helmet. Yeah. With the accoutrements, <laughs> perhaps, you know, the end, you know, because WWE special effects are such a big deal. Give him good special effect. Give him good ring entrance. And uh, maybe he'll be seen as something bigger, you know. So, yeah. Um, but but. But yeah, the first run, I mean, even though Vince, you know, didn't book him well, I did think that um, he didn't, he didn't, it's like sometimes you see guys and you go, oh man, so Vince doesn't see it, but look how good this guy is, you know, like uh, Claudio at times was like that, or, you know, there's just Chad Gable, you know what I mean, or just buried and buried and buried and you just watch and go, God damn, that guy's great. I mean, Cross wasn't that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, agree. So, by the way, this is going to give away when we record this show. As you were talking, Karen Cross was on SmackDown. Oh, my God. Attacked Drew McIntyre from the of back. Of all people. So, so, if they're attacking Drew, then he's bringing him back as a top guy. He Roman was in the ring with the Usos, and I don't have the volume on. I just have it on in the background while we're talking, just in case something like this happens so that I, I can see what's going on. And... Uh, Scarlet was with him. They, they had the whole hourglass thing. So it looks like the NXT version of what they were doing. Well, that's the except, best version. Except Cross has hair still. So he didn't he didn't shave the head. Well, if they're bringing him in with Drew against Drew, then they're bringing him in a top position. But 
um, you know, this is not the time to be beating Drew, for sure. Um, but that's interesting. The so idea anyway. looked to be that he was staring at Reigns. That's what it looked. Now again, I didn't. Wow. I, I didn't. I didn't hear any of the any of what was going on. I, I just saw the well, video in the back. I mean, so. Reigns Reigns does need new opponents, but I like I said. I guess if they bring him in, I mean, like I said, main roster, you can, um, you know, the entrances and all that. But I mean, when he was, you know, he was there. Like I said, he didn't stand out when he was there. But you know. We'll have to wait and see. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.